Alrighty, what's good YouTube? It's Jay here, and today we're going to be talking about the newest deck that is in Master Duel, Sword Soul. So, with the new update, obviously a lot of new cards were added to the game, all the Sword Soul staples, a lot of new Despia cards like Branded and Red, uh, Masquerade the Blazing Dragon. Uh, but uh, Listen, man, I've never played Sword Soul IRL, so I don't know what their IRL version of the deck feel like, but this kind of has me interested now. I decided to play Sword Soul for the first time today, in uh, Master Duel, and uh, I just immediately won two games back to back. Now, look, I know in gold anything is kind of possible, but some of the plays that I've discovered you can do with this deck are, well, just absolutely bonkers, honestly. I mean, I can already see what I can do for those higher tier matches that I'm gonna have eventually, but for the time being, having played the deck a couple of times, I'm, I'm actually kind of mind blown by some of the things that you can do with this deck. So we'll go over the profile really quick. Uh, we only have one effect builder because I don't, I didn't craft any other copies. I actually broke down quite a few cards, including some hero cards to build this deck. I'm thinking of making an alt account just for all my fun decks pretty much, which is probably what's gonna happen. I'll just make this my meta account. But we've got one effect builder, three max C because why not? Three Ash Blossom, a Destiny Hero Celestial and a Destiny Hero Dasher for the DPE package along with Fusion Destiny. Three Moye, three uh, Taia, ta 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 I'm still learning these names. Uh, we've got three in uh, Ecclesia, uh, three Long, Long Yuan. I'm still learning the names for this, uh, the, to these cards. And then we've got uh, two Tenny Spirit of Ashuda, two Nibiru, one Arch Nemes the Nemesis Proto. This card? Uh, <laughs> I see why it was banned IRL. I wasn't playing during the format where this card was released. Uh, I took a little bit of a break IRL, but I, I see why it was banned now. It's um, it's a card. It's a very good card. Oh, we got one Harpy's Feather Duster. I mean, we don't really need this in here, but I always like having a little bit of back row maneuver, uh, removal. It also bumps us to a weird 41 card build. Uh, I don't know if I really like that or not. Like I said, two uh, Fusion Destiny, three Sword Soul Emergence, because it's literally Rota. It's literally verbatim Rota. Uh, Sword Soul Sacred Summit. It's Monster Reborn on steroids. Two call by, uh, two cross up designator, and three imperm, and then one sword soul blackout. Now, for the extra deck, we've got obviously Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Uh, we've got one Yazi, two Baxia, Borlo Savage Dragon. Look, I threw this in here because I literally don't have any other synchros. I still need to break a few things down. I threw this in here for the literal memes because I don't have any other uh, synchro cards. I was thinking about playing one of those Ad Emancipator synchros I've been seeing everybody run. Uh, but it, does, it doesn't matter. You're probably never going to see this card anyway. You probably will never see the Adam Emancipator card like ever, really. Uh, one Draco Berserker, two Sword Soul Grandmaster. Uh, I. He? Uh, Chow? Chow? I, I, Chi Chow? I, I, I gotta learn these names, man. Uh, one Baron de Floor, because why not? Literally the best synchro debatably ever. The easiest to summon level 10 in human history. Oh, then we got one Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign, uh, Chen Ying, one Baguska, one Link Spider, two Monk, and one Verte. I need to make a Zeus for the deck, but I never saw any exceed potential <laughs> when I was playing earlier in a couple of games. I'm not really too pressed about Zeus right now. I mostly went through Synchro Summons. I always summon literally like two or three Synchro Monsters throughout the couple of games I played. That's the deck profile pretty much. Let's kind of just take a look at the couple of duels that I played. Now, this is two duels that I played today. I just played them this morning. I immediately wanted to kind of talk about this because I think it's a really fun deck. Now, mind you, like I said, this is my first time playing this deck, so there are going to be maybe a couple of misplays here and there. The first duel we played against was Live Twins. So this guy kind of goes all out, makes all of his combos, does all of his shenanigans pretty much. This was before I put Arch Nemesis Protoss in the deck, mind you. So he's going to go into Link Devotee. And uh, right here, I wasn't sure if I wanted to Nibiru or not. I was truly debating if I wanted to let him go a little further. I'm also just going to slightly turn this effect audio down. Just a smidge of. But I wasn't sure what I wanted to do right here, if I wanted to Nibiru or not. But I said, screw it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I don't want him to get a negate on the board. I have the opportunity to Nibiru right now. I'm going to go for it. And it was the it was the right call, honestly. I don't know how live to wins fully function because I'm still getting kind of used to a lot of the current cards in the game. Um, so somebody tell me if that was the right move or not. He's going to go into IP Mascarina right here. And uh, pass turn on that pretty much. <laughs> so 
I topped that cross out designator, which was phenomenal because he had an ash blossom for my emergence right here. So, you know, we're going to do cross out, uh, banish ash, blo ash blossom. And uh, pretty, pretty much just got to play it out kind of as you would. So, we're going to be summoning. Uh, I got to remember these names, man. We're going to be summoning our strategist over here. Or actually, no, we're going to be summoning our Moye next. Do the whole shenanigans, get the token on the field. And uh, pretty much just follow through with the basic strategy of getting Baron to floor on the field as well. So the deck overall is something else, man. It's some of the most fun I've probably had in the game. It's so consistent. It's so powerful. And there's just so many. It, it's hard to play around it sometimes, man. I, like I said, I did make a couple of misplays right here. You'll be seeing it, I think, by the uh, by the next turn. Yeah, by the next turn. He's gonna go into Nightmare Unicorn, and I believe we negate his bounce. And now, I'll talk about this a little bit here. This is where I kind of make a mistake next turn. I forgot that Baron to Floor is a once while this face of card is on the field kind of negate. I forgot it's that type of Omni negate. So going into the next turn, I'm thinking, okay, I have another negate for the next turn. I thought it was like a regular once per turn kind of thing. So. And then I also forgot about the fact that IP Masquerina makes it so you cannot destroy this, the monster that was uh, Link summoned with her. Like I said, a couple of mistakes here and there. I just need to remember to read cards. Uh, reading cards is a Yu-Gi-Oh player's biggest weakness. We're going to go into our Chi Xiao. Add uh, Sword Soul Blackout. Draw, <laughs> draw in the Maxi off of Moye. Uh, deal about 3k damage here. Set Sword Soul Blackout. Oh no, he has evenly matched. See, so right here, I should have kept uh, Chi Xiao out because then we would have had Swords of Blackout live. And again, I didn't realize that the once well, that the negate was a once while facing from the field kind of negate. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it like that. So that was a mistake on my part. He summons Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, and this is where I actually almost lost a duel. Uh, I play Max C, though. I'm going to get a couple of draws off of here. Had I not top decked that Max C. I'm pretty certain that this game would have turned out a little bit uh, a little bit differently. So we're getting Nightmare Unicorn now. You can probably guess where he's going here. Uh, we're going to go into good old access code Hawker. Obviously the best link in Yu-Gi-Oh history. I top deck another sacred. I top deck a sacred summit. A one of in my deck, mind you. So he's going to get rid of all my cards on the field, which makes sense. Like I said, I misplayed earlier. Uh, but the fact that we top decked um, sacred summit is well very very cash money so the shenanigans are just going to kind of play out but uh we're going to activate that sacred summit get back our general <laughs> our strategist i'm sorry to Matai, uh tia I, I don't know how to pronounce these names man but we're going to go for a, a synchro summon <laughs> our level 10 chen ying and the funny part is i'm just going to burn him for 1200 with strategist's effect so that's just that right there you know i didn't even have to go into the battle phase for that one i just ended it by burning him <laughs> so this is where i discovered uh why arch nemesis protos is banned i like i said i didn't play during that format but for those that do not know you can summon arch nemesis proto for free basically by banishing uh I'll, I'll read the card off for the new people here you can summon arch nemesis protos for free by banishing three monsters with different attributes from your graveyard and or face up on the field he cannot be destroyed by card effects and you can once per turn you can declare one monster attribute destroy all monsters on the field with that attribute also until the end of the next turn neither player can special summon monsters with said attribute so half of the time you're not going to be making like in this case you'll see what i'm going for but um we're going to summon vishuda vishuda into monk of the tinny summon effect veiler summon protos we declare dark i freeballed it i mean like we don't have a choice but to declare dark uh, ironically, the player that I was going up against is playing literally Cyber Darks. So, Arch Nemesis Protos is basically it neuters his deck. I should have summoned him in defense mode. That's I don't know why I summoned him in attack mode. Just ego challenging like any other re regular Yu-Gi-Oh player. But we're gonna fast forward through this basically because none of what he does really matters. He's gonna do a bunch of searching, searching for all his uh, Cyber Dark monsters, Cyber Dark Horn. I don't know what this uh, deck does. But I play Maxi just in case he has a follow-up play that doesn't involve a dark monster. Uh, I also happen to have Crossout Designator uh, for his called by. So, lots of luck on that turn. And as you can see, he literally can't do anything. He can't summon any dark monsters. He can't special summon anything. And that deck relies heavily on fusion summoning. 
So we get a free board wipe with Protos. I uh, summon Moye, not reading her effect once again. Forgetting you have to have a worm in hand to get the token on the field. Um, uh, this poor man though, he, he didn't have a choice. He, he had to he had to scoot. He, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't do a single damn thing. So I've got a few more duels I want to do with the deck. Obviously, two duels doesn't really say much, but I'm seeing every YouTuber and their mother make this deck. I'm seeing this deck constantly. Uh, or I've seen it constantly while playing Branded Despia. Um, the, the, the amount of recursion that the deck has is insane. It's very easy re to recover with it, pretty much. One card can you know, really just pop off uh, for you. If you're down bad with this deck, you usually can draw a card that will probably turn things around for you unless it's like celestial or a hand trap or something or a dasher but, but I, i'm gonna play around the deck a little bit more get some more cards kind of for it over the next couple of days and I just keep going with it it's a lot of fun it's very powerful and it's honestly really damn hard to beat i mean once you start your turn off with that baron uh basically preventing anybody from dropping a mural on your head because of a negate and uh, your Grandmaster, it, it, it's so hard to literally just kind of play around it. And of course, you know, with the whole DPE package as well, we can, and we can potentially end a turn with the Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, all these shenanigans. Um, the the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel right now is literally the Wild West. You can kind of play any deck that you want. If we're being honest, you can play literally any deck that you want, honestly. Um, but there's so much broken shit in the game. Now, one thing I have been considering adding is, uh, <laughs> well, I've been considering adding Deng Long to the deck just for the memes. I mean, we've got Deng Long at three. Obviously, you won't be playing three. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I've been strongly debating on adding Deng Long to the deck. I mean, it's a very powerful card, it can get you a counter trap. Uh, it can get you pillars rather it, it, it's it's uh, there's so much versatility you have so many options kind of with this deck right now and i don't even believe we have the entirety of the sword soul uh package deck whatever you want to call it uh, available right now now obviously there are other versions of the deck too there's 10 ye sword soul which is more heavily focused on the 10 ye packages um but again, this is what I'm rocking right now. I, I think this is a really strong build. I do want to change a couple of things about it, maybe. But for the most part, I'm not really complaining. It's a very strong deck. You should give it a try if you have the materials to build it. It's honestly not that expensive either. Um, main deck monsters, you know, you have three Ecclesia and uh, three Moye. Moye is an ultra rare. Ecclesia is a super rare. And uh, then your, your Rota is also a super rare. And that's pretty much it. If you're playing competitively, obviously, you should probably already have all the hand traps and whatnot. The extra deck also isn't too crazy. I mean, you get a free link spider right off the rip, and then pretty much everything else is super rares. You're a little bit flexible with a couple of the synchros, maybe. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, this is one of the cheap... I, I would, I generally think this is one of the more cheaper meta decks to a degree. To a degree, to a degree. Ultra rares are still very hard to come across, um, unless you have alt accounts, but... I, yeah, that, that's going to be pretty much it for this, guys. I really like this deck. Uh, I can't wait to play it more um, and have a little bit of fun with it. So if you enjoyed the deck, be sure to leave a like on this video. Uh, sub to the channel because we're going to be doing more Yu-Gi-Oh! related content. My channel is mostly or has always been Star Wars focused, but I really, really love Yu-Gi-Oh! It's one of the games I've been passionate about since I was a kid. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day. I'll see you later.